Amazon's $1 billion Lord of the Rings series has an official synopsis. Tell me, what would you do with $1 billion? Would you help end world hunger with lembus bread and potatoes? Would you build yourself not one, but two towers? Or would you help create a five season long Lord of the Rings television series? Well, if you're Amazon, the answer is absolutely that last one. Ever since Amazon and the Tolkien estate put the one ring on it and announced they were officially spending a mind boggling amount of money to make a new Lord of the Rings TV show, fans have been speculating about its plot more feverishly than Frodo after getting sad with a more Knife. <laughs> now, while we have an ongoing chronicle of every single update about Amazon's Lord of the Rings series over on Nerdist.com, Tuesday brought our best peek yet behind the narrative curtain in the form of an official series synopsis. So, as first reported by the One Ring.net, this is the official synopsis for the Lord of the Rings series. Amazon Studios' forthcoming series brings to screens for the very first time the heroic legends of the fabled Second Age of Middle-Earth's history. This epic drama is set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and will take viewers back to an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory and fell to ruin, unlikely heroes were tested, hope hung by the finest of threads, and the greatest villain that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all the world in darkness. Beginning in a time of relative peace, this series follows an ensemble cast of characters both familiar and new, as they confront the long-feared re-emergence of evil to Middle-earth. From the darkest depths of the Misty Mountains, to the majestic forests of the elf capital of Linden, to the breathtaking island kingdom of Numenor, to the furthest reaches of the map, these kingdoms and characters will carve out legacies that live on long after they are gone. Oh boy, that was almost as long as the extended editions, which is saying something. There's an awful lot to unpack in there, so... Looks like rampant speculation's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> But before I do that, please let me remind you that anything I mispronounce is in fact a personal attack on you. Now there will come a day where we see young Aragorn on our TV screens, but it is not this day, because now we can lay those rumors about the show following a young Aragorn to rest, at least for now, given the show's apparent focus on the second age of Middle-earth's history. It was the period during which Numenor rose to prominence, Sauron emerged as a great evil, and the rings of power were first forged. Now, the series takes place thousands of years before the events of both The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, and we know that Amazon is already committed to five seasons, so they're not going to just simply walk us into Mordor. They're going to make us work for it. They're going to take their sweet, sweet time. Now, the great powers that are forged are likely the Rings of Power, and specifically the One Ring. The kingdom that rose to glory and fell to ruin is Numenor, and the greatest villain that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen is Tom Bombadil. Sorry, I, I, I read that wrong. I meant to say Sauron, not Tom Bombadil. Wink. So what can we expect to see during this period? Well, after consulting with our token Tolkien scholars, editor Matt and Lindsay Romain, as mentioned above, we believe this series will encompass Sauron rising to power to take over Middle-earth, which includes him doing things like arriving in Mordor, creating the Rings of Power, the emergence of the Ring Rates, and of course, how Sauron brought ruin to the once great island kingdom of Numenor, a kingdom of men that emerged from the sea during the Second Age as a gift from the gods. So the island of Numenor was home to the descendants of the Adain, a race of men, some of whom fled before it could eventually be destroyed, and they went on to found the kingdoms of Arnor and Gondor. So while Aragorn was a descendant of the Dunedain, who are in turn descendants of the Adain and is the rightful king of Gondor, I still wouldn't get my hopes up for seeing like a Baby's Day Out-esque adventure featuring everyone's favorite future ranger, because let's be honest, it's just too much time to cover. So one of the biggest moments in the Sauron Numenor saga is when King Arphadazon brings a willing captured Sauron to Numenor, and once inside the kingdom, Sauron corrupts the Numenorians, making them worship Morgoth, the first Dark Lord of Middle-earth, instead of the Valar, the powerful beings who shaped the world as we know it, by promising them eternal life. Now one thing leads to another, and before you know it, there's a 500-foot-tall temple to Morgoth where they sacrificed human beings on the regular. Now this corruption eventually prompted the Numenorians to set sail for the Undying Lands in order to attack the Valar, which in turn leads Ed Iluvatar, the supreme deity who created the world and the Valar, to destroy the island kingdom, sending it to a watery grave a la Atlantis. So all in all, it kind of sounds like this Lord of the Rings series is going to be a rollicking good time with a happy ending for everyone involved. Now, according to the One Ring.net, this series will be at least five seasons long, with eight to ten episodes per season, and filming for the full series begins this month in New Zealand. Now, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and a Monster Calls director, J.A. Bayona, directed the two-part pilot, which has already been shot and is currently in post-production. 
According to Tolkien scholar Tom Shippey, who was originally brought in to consult on the series but is now seemingly no longer involved in the show, the show is not allowed to contradict Tolkien's writings about the Second Age. That means that everything in the series will adhere to pre-established canon. But they only have the rights to the Second Age as it appears in The Lord of the Rings, which means that mentions in The Silmarillion and The Atlas of Middle-earth are seemingly off-limits for the time being. Now that said, we'll just have to see how deep the dwarves in the minds of Amazon Primia are willing to delve so they can bring us the greatest series possible. No matter what, when it comes to like literally any news about this series, we have to give it up and agree with Gandalf. It's quite cool. Now, in the meantime, we will keep you up to date on all things Lord of the Rings related over on Nerdist.com. But for now, tell me, what do you think of this news? Did you glean anything from the description that we might have missed? And what do you hope to see from the eventual Lord of the Rings TV show? Potatoes! Let's discuss in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.